Welcome back to the Election Whisperer. I am so excited to be sitting here with some of Austin and some of Texas's best and most exciting grassroots activists. As you guys know on the Election Whisperer, I talk a lot about the importance of grassroots activism um, and organizing, especially in terms of getting out the vote, right? Um, and how much of an element that has been for Democrats in their post-Trump uh, electoral strategies. Uh, one of the things that I picked up on coming out of the 2016 election in Virginia, as this theory was kind of solidifying with observations I had had about um, election outcomes, studying polarization and, and the um, Obama midterms, which to me had really been uh, uh, you know, I wasn't satisfied with the explanation that the other analyst had offered, which was, oh, there was this big middle class backlash, independent voter backlash to Obamacare, right? Because the thing is, before the recession, the dominant issue other than Iraq, uh, the dom dominant domestic issue for the 2008 election cycle was health care reform. I mean, it was polling at like 80 percent. People wanted health care reform. And it's true, like once people see the sausage making for public policy, it's always nasty. And the Republican Party is really adept at exploiting the sausage making for public opinion. So they really were good at the, like the um, you know, messaging components of that. But you know, the idea that 63 net seats in the House of Representatives could flip simply because independents were that sad that this really market-oriented, pretty moderate version of healthcare reform passed, to me, it didn't seem like a, a really good explanation, especially given how much the demographics of the electorate changed and in the way that I was understanding the way that the party coalitions were emerging and how um, you know, much partisanship impacted vote choice, it seemed to me like what the other part of the story was that you know, the Obama coalition basically stood him up at the altar. They were like, oh, thanks for that health care reform, buddy. I'm going to go and you know float down the Austin River now on my inner tube and drink Coronas. And oh, sorry, I guess you needed me to vote. Didn't realize, right? So um, post 2016, 2017, I'm like, oh, that coalition's coming back now. Now they're going to be like, oh, I guess I should have voted, and they're going to be super motivated to vote. And one of the ways it manifested is I kept running into people who were like, oh, you know, I used to be a casual voter, and now I'm running around. I have a grassroots group. It's got 1,000 people in it or 5,000 people. We're in rural Virginia. It's got 500 people. I'm running around D.C. with a pink pussy, cat on my he pussy hat on my head, you know. And I thought that's an evidence, like it's a, um, it's a qualitative piece of evidence. I could quantitatively measure it. I could measure all these groups, but it's a qualitative measurement of energy on the left, right? And so here we are in Texas and here is a cycle. It's coming on the second cycle of 2018 where we saw these state legislative uh, seats flip. Um, and I think the party probably here, the state party was surprised. I was probably surprised, right, that they got 12 seats. They, if they're like Virginia Democrats, you know, um, they were expecting to do well, you know, but not 15 seats well, right? And, uh, you know, even though, you know, maybe a couple people were like, hey, you're going to do really well, right? Uh, and so now they have um, better understanding of that and better organization and better infrastructure, and they want the majority, right? And you guys are a big, big part of that. So why don't you tell me a little bit about your two organizations? Uh, I do have a third organization I'm gonna highlight, but she can't be here today. So um, we're gonna talk to her on Zoom uh, after uh, this conversation. So why don't you guys tell me a little bit about each of your organizations and what they're doing in Texas, uh, both at the state legislative level, but also in the federal house if, it, if, if applicable. And, and tell us a little bit, I think too, about the uniqueness of the, of the organizations you've built. Rachel, uh, I'm of course here uh, representing Sisters United Alliance. And we woke up a little bit faster than everybody else did because in 2014, in Harris County, the third largest county in the United States, first largest in Texas, we lost close to 20,000 women who did not show up to vote, who were normal Democratic voting, with Wendy Davis and Letitia Vanderpute at the top of the ticket. 
and we did not know what in the hell happened. And so uh, another person, not myself, Diane Mosier, decided to put together a group where we would go after these women who were not voting, who were likely Democrats or Democrats who were not voting in prior elections. And that's how we birthed Sisters United Alliance. And come 2016, when all hell broke loose around the nation, Harris County went blue in a big way for the first time. And we delivered 37,000 women to the polls who had never voted or who had only voted once in a, in a way back like a couple of elections. Well, that's amazing. And uh, Diane, you're a part of the Sisters United Alliance, or Sisters United Alliance. Gee, I had it right the first time. <laughs> I'm so bad with names. I have to check myself every time. Um, so uh, talk about when you joined the or or organization. Yes. Yeah, so as part of Sisters United Alliance, I started looking more into the data. It's a great project that talks to women who are registered to vote, but they're not really voting. And so the whole key for Sisters United is to realize why are they not voting and then kind of tweak the messaging towards them. So we as Sisters United ended up realizing with data that there's more Democrats out there than what we even thought of. So that we don't need to mess with the independents, with the, maybe the ones that will cross. Let's just focus on the women that are likely Democrats that they just need to be talked to. And so as Sisters United, as a trusted messenger, not as a candidate or Democratic Party or so on, we try to talk to them into, this is why it is important. Let me show you some issues that are affecting you right now and showing you how by voting, that will completely change in your daily lives. So that's kind of the focus that we've been doing with Sisters United together, turning out the women that we need to flip Texas. We need to take care of the base, and there's tons of organizations that do a great job at that. And then Sisters United comes in to complement those efforts and turning out um, more votes for the elections. So you can imagine then a less election whisperer audience, especially those that know me well, why it would be that when Sisters United contacted me and said, hey, you know, we're looking at, you, well, we saw your research and we were like, oh my God, there's this political scientist. He's like telling the world exactly what we're doing. And, you know, it was a synergy, obviously amazing a synergy right away. But it's, it, and it was great for me because I do this theoretical argument and no one you know, listens to me about it. And I'm like, why are you having these like arguments with people who are never gonna listen to you when you could devote that same amount of time and money with people who would listen to you if you just went and talked to them, right? And, and here is this organization doing that. And the model that you guys have done and deployed with so much success here is, is just, it's just, it could work with Latinos. It could work with men. It could exactly. work with young people, right? I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, rep you know, it's, it's reproducible, re reproducible, whatever. I'm a terrible social scientist. Um, so it's so exciting for me to have you on to talk about. And then, um, why don't you tell us about your wonderful organization? Sure. Um, so um, we started Blue Action Democrats in my neighbor's uh, dining room in December of 2017. You know, like a lot of people. Um, woke up after the election in 2016 thinking, oh my God, I should have done something more. Right. <laughs> and um, Which is my model, right? I mean, you're <laughs> my model, right? <laughs> right. I mean, I've always been a good voter and at times, I mean, I was really involved in 2014, Wendy Davis election, but 2016, I really didn't do very much. My excuse was I had two infants at home, but right. um, I felt incredibly guilty and started trying to find ways to get involved to, to, to fix this. Um, and uh, got really kind of frustrated with the democratic clubs and things that we went to because it, I mean, it, it, they didn't really do anything. And it was a lot of people who um, were retired and had a lot of time and that was sort of their social circle. But for mostly working moms like me, I don't have time for that. Like right. if you're gonna, if I'm gonna dedicate two hours of my Saturday or Sunday or you know a weeknight, which is even harder, to come and try to make a difference, it's, you know, I need to feel like I actually got something done. So we sat around and started the Get Shit Done Club. No, and yeah, yeah, that was our- Hey, working. that's a club after my own heart. <laughs> right? And but we have we have stickers that say GSD. I mean, yeah, that sort of- Get been, Shit Done Club. Yes. I like it. And it was kind of, it was funny because, funny, not funny, but just saying that's what um, set us apart from a lot of the other groups, um, it, you know, sort of said something. So. We had our first meeting, so we officially called it Blue Action Democrats. We wanted the Democrats in the name, and yep. we wanted you know, sort of the action part in there. 
And we had our first meeting in January of 2018 and 120 people showed up. And our whole, we now have three chapters, three here in Travis County and one in Bear County and are, you know, kind of focused on the election right now. We had the Flip the Texas House campaign that you're going to talk with Carrie Marshall about who's working with um, those Democratic candidates in those flippable Texas House races because all of those areas that are flippable align with what we did in Southwest Austin. It's an area that has been traditionally Republican, has been trending blue, and we just accelerated that by talking to those sometimes voters, the people who already agree with us, that we don't have to change their mind, we just have to give them you know, the education and the motivation for voting. And especially, I mean, I 100% believe our I, sort of same thing, like working theory, seeing that kind of um, bear out in 2018, our working theory was, if we could just get those sometimes voters to show up, then we can win because the, you know, it's not a red state, it's not blue state, this is a non-voting state. Right. If we can fix that, then then we'll do it. Like if we're getting 80, 90% turnout and we're still losing, then we've got some pers persuasion work. But for now, I've never seen that that, that has not been our, um, our, you know, reason for doing things. And the other benefit of talking, of targeting those people who already agree with us, especially in suburbia, is that the number one thing that we hear at the doors is I'm the only one, like whispered usually, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm the only Democrat in my neighborhood. I'm, and we can, there's power in numbers. And, you know, I think the path to flipping Texas runs through suburbia. And especially this year, all those flippable districts, they're all yep. suburban districts around Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, Houston. And so um, we found that that message has really, really resonated. and. You know, we had like 200 volunteers knocking doors in 2018. We knocked on 11,000 doors. We, um, Beto did 10 points better than Hillary Clinton in two, that just two years earlier in those same areas. So it's, um, it's been the only thing that's kept me sane for the past <laughs> three years um, is, and I'm sure you guys have felt the same, is just being active um, and, you know, doing something in our own neighborhoods has been very rewarding and we've seen the change. We flipped one of those 12 um, house districts in 2018. And so we need to protect that one and now we're aiming for some congressional um, races along with the other, you know, 17 under 10 project. Very good. And and you um, and you so, so you you have one house that you helped flip, state house that you have to defend. Are you doing any expansion work in the state house too? Yeah, so that's mostly through the Flip the Texas House campaign with Carrie right. Marshall. So so um, we we started that, you know, focusing on the 17 Texas House districts that um, we lost by less than 10 points in 2018. We only need we need to keep the 12 we won in 2018, right. and we only need to flip nine more. And Beto won nine of those districts. Right. So, our, so it definitely can be done. It can absolutely be, yeah. you know, and I think they've even expanded it now. The candidates are so terrific. And you mentioned something about more infrastructure and, and I see that, I'm sure you guys compared to 2018, it felt like everything was scrappy. Nobody had any money. Nobody, right. We were sort of out of practice for getting volunteers. And, and now, you know, we've got tons of volunteers. It feels like money is being invested in yeah. these races instead of Texas being used as an ATM machine by democratic politicians right, right, which right, is what right. it's always been. well that's certainly the story of virginia's metamorphosis yeah. right it's a, once competition starts to get recognized it starts to um you know build infrastructure and it starts to build investment right so it's not like virginia suddenly um you know metamorphosized into a blue state right it was a staged progression um but yes i mean it's certainly especially in terms of that state house state general assembly flip it was a staged progression that really took that time to build up the infrastructure. And even then, it still has groomed to grow, right? There are things that um, didn't quite make it, even in this 2019 cycle, because Virginia has that oddity of not being tied to the presidential calendar, which is much harder to lift. So like organizations and activists and part of the state party of Virginia has to do a much heavier lift in terms of that because they're off of the big cycles right but yeah so it certainly is that success begets success and it begets money and attention and um but yeah the fact that that um it's pre-labor day and so much investment and so many districts have ended up on the d triple c's radar is a really good sign definitely for both those house races and also those d triple c's now now sherry can you talk to us a little bit about your analytics because they were just so 
uh, amazing. Spot on. Yeah, spot on and amazing to me. So tell us a little bit about those to and, close and out. And I'll, I'll defer to Diana on part of that, but, but Rachel, what was so exciting about what we did in 2018 is we expanded out to eight other counties, including Fort Bend, and we were part of flipping Fort Bend. So Fort Bend also became blue as a suburban county around Harris County. We generated within those, those nine counties through very careful targeting that was done by Diana and creating our data of who we were gonna go out after, we ended up generating a, a, out of 122,000 women who either had only voted once or not voted at all, we turned out 44,000. We flipped a state seat that was, that was in Harris County. We flipped the first and the 14th Court of Appeals with what we did there, which was uh, just sent shock waves across everything. And to be very honest, in Harris County, we cleaned house. There was not a single Republican left in office in Harris County. Wow. We cleaned through the courts, through everything. And we are doing the same thing and planning this, and we're overlaying on 13 counties in Texas what Diana's gonna tell you about. And in that are those 17 house districts or several of the Court of Appeals, all of this together in moving forward with this. So, and I love it because it's happening with women, right? This exactly, untapped, all women power pool of women and um, you know all they needed was they needed attention and and resource so Diana can you talk about that to close us out absolutely so just to follow you what they needed was just to get motivated right we, we if we take it back in time they registered vote once they felt passionate they thought their vote mattered at one point right somehow they got to this in their lives or they just you know didn't believe in the system anymore they don't really buy into the candidate so it's all about just getting them, motivated them, and educate them through the whole process of election. When is election? How do I go vote? You know, where do I go vote? The tiny little basic things that really will show people, okay, I gotta make a plan, I gotta go there Tuesday, or so on. So the women that we're talking to are this women, and what we try to look into was the women that were likely Democrats, but we started drilling and drilling more into the analytics behind the scenes, because obviously, since there's no much data with this woman because there's no, you know, they're not good voters. We gotta drill into different score systems that we have in our voter file, let's call it. And so we started looking at the women that would really uh, respond to an organization like us, Sisters United Alliance, the women that really need to hear from us and not maybe from others. And then the key to, to Sisters United also is that we talk to them from, each, from every angle. We talk to them through phones, mailers, digital, texting, everything that you can imagine. Because if only if it takes you about, let's say, six, you know, seven times to turn out a good voter, imagine how much it takes you to turn out a non-voter. Right. So Sisters United really only focuses on this woman. And through the data analytics that we do, we make sure that this woman will be the one that will be talked to and then turned out to vote. And so that's what we're doing this time around in the 13 counties. We have like about 600,000 women that we're targeting. Wow. And th let me put this in perspective also. Texas has about 2 million women that have never voted since they registered vote. Over 1 million of them are likely Democrats, are the type of Democrats that we as Sisters United would vote, will, will turn out or we will talk to. So we have tons of women that we can talk to. All we gotta do is spend some resources, some time, and also, the right messaging. You have to have the right message to be able to motivate this woman to turn out. And so that's what Sisters and I did. And so through all the, the analytics and the messaging that we do this 2020, we'll be targeting the 13 counties, all the flippable seats are gonna be in those counties. And then we're gonna prioritize on those areas that Texas needs to be able to, to flip. In 2018, um, we have a state rep that only won by 113 votes. Right. We deployed over 1,300 votes in that district. Right. You know, in, in the county, as large as, as you can, you know, the third largest county, we have um, our county judge that, you know, we ended up, um, she ended up winning by 19,000 votes. We deployed about 34,000 votes. So it really adds up to the base and to the electorate and be able to flip seats. So that's what we're hoping. And I think that's what we, that is gonna happen in 2020. And can I also ask you, have you, what have you learned about messaging for these voters? What did they respond to? They hit it out of the ballpark in 2018. <laughs> you did, you did. You and I'll tell you did. exactly. And it's so funny how it all started. So myself and, and the other consultant for, for Sisters United, Jaime Mercado, we both started just talking about, okay, where do we start? Right. And I started just drilling into some voting rights for women. And so I started, to be honest with you, I started reading and paying more attention to the timeline 
of things. And I started realizing, oh my God, it hasn't really been that long. You know, and I'm, and I'm gonna say, I take things for granted, right? It was the younger generation, immigrants, so on. You right. don't really realize that it really hasn't been that long since your mother, your grandmother right. were fighting for things. Oh, yes. So that kind of research uh, put it in perspective for me. And I was just having this conversation with Jaime and I was just getting so passionate and angry about like, how come my mom yes. couldn't get a credit card? You know, they had yes. to have a co-sign it. Yes. How come we had women in Congress, you know, even um, um, elected and not being able to get their own credit card mm -hmm. on their own? So with that, Jaime said, Diana, this is the conversation that we need to start at everybody's homes. Yes. And so we started with that. So our messaging was very basic in the way uh, at the beginning where it was, let's remind them of where we've been. Let's remind them that it hasn't been that long. And let's make sure that they can see it the way that I saw it. I saw my mother went through that. My sister went through that. Now we're still fighting. So it is our turn to kind of turn out, you yeah. know, to turn out to vote. And so we picked that type of messaging just to kind of move them. We picked another messaging, you know, with the issues that were, you know, affecting them in a daily basis. Back then also a major issue was the separation of families with the Trump administration. So which woman, you know, yeah. will be for it. So we pick issues like that. And then of course it was a whole push about, it is your turn to make things different. And you have a voice because of your mother, your grandmother, so use it. And one of the, the things that I love the most, and I'm a data-driven person, the whole project is data-driven. And we are all about numbers, and obviously our numbers show that Sisters United really works. But what really moved me, we got a little email from this lady that was in our targets. She went out of her way to reach out to Sherry. She found my, my email on the website. And told her, your mailer made me very sad I never vote, where do I go? Oh, that's, oh, great. that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. That's my kind of mailer. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, nice. So that really just moved me. I said yes. the messaging was perfect, yes. the timing, everything. And um, and that's really what, what moves Sisters United to make sure that we're changing life, to make sure that we're turning out this women to vote in, and make sure we're connecting those issues with their power to vote. And emotion. There you go, right? Yes. Oh, oh go ahead. Yeah, you had no, a question. Please. I was going to say, it's so interesting because we, um, uh, what we found is we didn't even have to talk about issues at the door. Um, it, it, what we found with people, at least in 2018, um, and we were focusing just in suburbs, so maybe it was a little bit, um, and not just on a specific demographic, but just sort of a geographic area. Yeah, yeah, yeah was that people just didn't think that their vote mattered. Right. And especially in Texas, where it's been a one-party state for so long, and they've drawn these lines on purpose so that you know, our vote didn't matter, that um, just being able to tell people that this year, it really does. Yes. Your vote will matter yes. this year. Here's, a, and, and we're with you. Like, this is a, this is a grassroots, neighbor, volunteer-driven organization. We were doing this for ourselves. Right, right, right. And, and we found, you know, and we already know that talking to people at the door, which we can't do this year, is the most effective thing. And, and if you're talking to somebody where I can say, hi, I'm Carrie. I just live right around the corner in the neighborhood, and I want to talk to you about, you know, are you planning to vote? Are you planning to vote for Democrats up and down the ballot? Was, um, you know, people are a little nicer if they think they're going to run into you at HEB. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Um, but, you know, and now we're just doing the same thing with, you know, texting and lit drops and phone calls to be able to, to reach out to people. But um, it, it's really it's really interesting to hear you talk about just specific issues because we we hadn't gotten to the point where we needed to specifically sort of message to that and we're not as sophisticated to do that. We were just sort of scrappy talking to people at doors just to get them um, that their vote matters, which I, I think in Texas is such a novel concept. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, it's so important because it's about stakes framing. So I always tell people for Democrats, what Republicans do really right, and although they take it too far and have taken it to the point where some of their voters have lost their minds, right? <laughs> um, but what they but they what they get without going overboard is it's about tapping into emotion and it's about stakes, right? This election matters because this, right? This thing matters. Like if you do it, it's not. Um, some small minutia either, some small little thing about like defunding, you know, some aspect of the code. It has to be, it matters in an epic way. And it matters in a personal way that's going to affect you too, is usually 
how best, I think, to frame it. The, you know, the liberals are a little different because liberals do care more about the other than other, um, you know, ideologies. Uh, but yeah, that's great. I mean, it's just been so great to hear about how you guys, your groups evolved and what they're doing and, and how instrumental they're gonna be in Texas. And I have to save time, of course, to talk to flip the Texas house. So I'm gonna do that before you, you, before yeah. you do one more thing. The one county to look at yeah. that has all three of these layered in, the Sisters United Alliance, the Blue Action Dems, and the flip the Texas is in Bear County. Okay, and Bear, Bear County, County is, is there have San a Antonio. city? San, San Antonio. Antonio. Yeah. Bear County is the one to look at because all three of these programs That's are a great point. all barrels out That's great. on this. And that would be the one to look at. And there the will be a shameless plug for money at the end of Fantastic. the Fantastic. Yes. We, yeah. we can put it to good use. Yeah, there definitely will be, but it's gonna come in at the end of Carrie, right? All right, very good. Well, that's wonderful, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Really appreciate yeah. it.